So we will now learn a new type qualifier for pointers and which is called const. So this type qualifier allows us to change any type of a pointer to be immutable. That means you cannot modify this variable further. And it also can be used, by the way, to normal variables like an integer variable. But it's a bit tricky when you use it with pointers because the meaning depends on the location. Here we see one example where we have int star const p. And I really recommend you again to read from right to left. So we, it means p is a constant pointer to an integer. That means the pointer object is constant, meaning we cannot change the pointer, but wherever the pointer points to, we may be able to change. So here what we have in the next line is, we see p is a pointer to a constant integer. Now that makes more sense, right? So we are not able in this case to change wherever p points to the value. So it can be both sometimes, so you may be able to not change the pointer itself, or it can be co more complex if you have multiple layers of pointers. So here we see p is a constant pointer to a constant pointer of constant integers. So wow, that's a lot um, and makes it not even very easily to be read. Right, so one exception by the way from reading right to left is arrays. So I would here say p is an array of 10 pointers to an integer. Okay, so that's the only exception to the rule. Generally, I find this rule very useful. So let me speak a bit more about pointers. And there is a term called aliasing. When, whenever you, as a compiler, try to compile code, you try to optimize this code. In this case, you try to minimize memory access and try to use the registers in our CPU. So consider that those two steps when you have y and position 0 is x and position 0 plus 1. And then you run as the next instruction, z and position 0 should be x and position 0. So you can see um, that we try to reuse x and position 0 twice. So it would be really meaningful to copy the value into a register and use it twice in such a sequence of instructions. But what happens if y is x? Then, in fact, what we would see here is that x in position 0 is x in position 0 plus 1, which means we would change the content of x by incrementing it by 1, and then we would do in the second step the assignment here, which would change it not to be the old value, but the value plus 1. So, and that's the tricky part. So when we use multiple pointers, they may point actually to the same or overlapping regions. So here you see an example for a declaration of a function that should do something like a equals b times c. Okay, so we could say this function has a size, so the length of, you know, those vectors, and then we have something like a as an output, we have an input as b, and an input as c. Okay, we may also declare them as constants, so c is a constant, a pointer to a constant integers, because those are red, the only thing that is written is a. So, but what happens if I call this function with something like size and then I input a, a, and a, right? So that might become tricky. And that's what we actually call aliasing because multiple pointers may point to the same or overlapping addresses. So the compiler must generate code that uh, works in overlapping cases, which is typically inefficient code because it has to go back in memory every time something is read and cannot cache data efficiently. So the compiler cannot optimize code as pointers can be al aliases. And there are rules specific specified in our C language that the compiler can assume. It means two pointers of the same type can be aliases, but not of different types. And the void pointer could alias with anything. And these are very coarse grained rules. But if you as a programmer um, want to give further instructions, there's a restrict qualifier. So we can say a, r, a is a constant, for example, constant, we use this constant qualifier, but it's a restricted pointer to an integer. That means that this, we can assume as a compiler, 
that A out is different from any other integer pointers that we may see here as a signature. And that then enables important optimizations, but note that the code will break if all input pointers are the same or overlapping. Right? So in this case, you could have said, you know, C is supposed, C may be actually the same as B, but A is supposed to be restrict because it should be different from B and C. Yeah, otherwise, maybe this operation doesn't make sense. So we would have put here restrict modifier as well. 